Hey, what is up, drone patients? This is Dr. Quads, and today we're going to be talking about something that's not explicitly FPV related, but of course it's closely related, and that is 3D printing, but more specifically, the Ender S1 Pro. Now, I absolutely love this printer. It's fantastic. However, you're going to have to take my review with a huge grain of salt because this is the first printer that I ever bought, and it's also the only printer that I've ever bought. So I only know well, really about one printer, and that is the Ender S1 Pro. However, I do own more than one printer. So then how is that first statement true or possible? Uh, of course, I bought a second Ender S1 Pro, and here are some of the reasons why. First off, the most important thing about this for me specifically was the direct drive extruder. You see, I print a lot of TPU parts for FPV, uh, flexible, strong, super good stuff. I have had a lot of issues when I first started printing TPU, but with a little bit of research and the proper settings in Cura, I got really fantastic results. However, real quick and not to get sidelined, but very important to talk about the quality of the TPU that you are printing is like paramount for what kind of quality you can get out of this thing. And I only use for colors that they have the uh, Polymaker HF uh, TPU 95A. It is freaking fantastic. This stuff prints like PLA as far as the ease of printing it. And it prints really fast. It prints better, stronger. Literally, there is no downside that I can feasibly comprehend with this TPU other than the price. It is a bit pricey. Uh, but it, you, listen, if for the amount of time you save and the amount of waste of material you save, it's worth it. And that kind of leads me to my second reason for buying a second Ender S1 Pro. And that is because I actually started getting quite a few orders on my Taobao page for random 3D printed parts. And I think I have like over 100 parts up for sale now. I just throw them up there, you know, just a real quick little template thing and say, hey, here's some landing gear for the Synlog 35. This is going to be like a dollar, you know, nothing really serious, but it costs me basically pennies to, to make. So, hey, I'm making a profit. I've had to up the prices of things as I realized that it's not just about the actual cost of the material or even just the cost of the electricity to print it. There's also things about time, about where to your machine, about your time, about cleanup time and shipping costs and all those kind of things. So I've been learning quite a lot about business just from owning my 3D printer. And this is the last reason and the most important reason about this beautiful machine here is that it is paid for itself. That's right, guys. Out of all the things that I own in this workshop, <laughs> the only thing that has actually not cost me financially and been a drain on my finances, but actually paid for itself, and now it's starting to make me money, and that's my Ender S1 Pro. So I'm very partial to this thing. I love it so much. However, as you can see, it's here on the bench. Now, why is it here on the bench? It is time to change this nozzle. Now, I did a lot of research, and I found out that, like, after a month or two, you need to start thinking about changing your nozzle. You know, if you're printing like once a week or something, uh, you need to change your nozzle like once every three months or whatever. It's now been about four months and I have been printing almost nonstop. Almost nonstop, guys. I mean, I'm printing every day. I'm printing whenever I can. I'm just, I've gone through so many rolls at this point. I can't even count how many times I printed for this thing. So I'm very impressed at the build quality and longevity of this thing. But I have been, I've been starting to get some jams with the TPU. And I thought it was the crappy TPU that I was using because this green TPU I had, it just would not freaking print without jamming. But then the other day, I got a jam with the black Polymaker HF. And I'm like, nope, something is wrong here. I've been printing maybe six rolls of this right now with not a single jam. Something's up with this. And sure enough, I did some research and I looked and I saw, oh my goodness gracious, that, yep, that nozzle is uh, pretty old and it's time to change. And luckily, Creality gives you an extra nozzle when you purchase the uh, S1 Pro. So look at that, man. So let's go to doop, doop, bop. There we go. There's the desktop. And we'll take a look here at this video. I am vanilla. I'm, I'm honestly, guys, I'm learning right as uh, I'm learning with you. I have watched this before. It's a decent video. Creality, give me some money. Okay. Give, give me some money. And, uh, and I'll make you a better one, I promise. Like, I'll actually, you know, put in the time to set all the cameras up right. I'll spend a good amount of time on it. And I'll make you the, the best tutorial on how to clean and fix and maintenance this thing that you've ever seen in your life. Just give me a bunch of free, give me a free S1 and uh, a bunch of filament. I'll do it for that. Just for you. <laughs> 
Oh, snap. Yeah, one more thing. As you can see, I installed Clipper, and I actually have a little Raspberry Pi here that hopefully I'll be able to lift up without uh, breaking anything. Eh, this little Raspberry Pi here that I uh, installed into a 3D printed case. And that's running Clipper, the Ender S1 Pro with Clipper installed on a little Raspberry Pi. And of course you use an accelerometer to you know measure the vibrations and cancel them out. And it's just the print quality and the speed increased just dramatically. And that's not even a real word. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. I'm very happy with this thing. I really want to service it. So let's, let's, let's get to it guys, stop distracting me, jeez. All right, I think we're pretty much good to go. We got to heat this thing up to uh, 300 and, or sorry, 230, which is a little bit, uh, you know, that's scary. Now we are going to, here, let me switch this over here. We're going to take this up and hopefully not burn ourselves in the process because we got to lay it down. Uh, there we go. This is how they said to do it. So we're doing it this way. Now we got to get this off, and I don't think using my fingers is the right choice. Uh, there's a lot of little stringy strings here, but yeah, you can see this thing is really looking pretty old. And I probably got to get a new fan soon, too. But the build quality on this is just outstanding. I'm very impressed with Creality. Oh, that's freaking hot. Oh, baby, that thing gets hot. Wow. Yeah, it's 180 degrees. This is going to be a big boy task. I'm... Pretty nervous, not gonna lie, pretty nervous. I've never done this before. So let's see if I break anything. Now, how do they hold this? They hold it like this. All right, supposed to wait to 230, which it is there. And let's get this in and, oh, there we go. It came right out, that wasn't too hard. Okay. To be honest, the nozzle doesn't look as bad as I thought it would look. But, um, you know, we don't want to, like, why not? Just let's replace the nozzle and see if that fixes it. I'm going to take a look in there and see if, well, I am going to poke it with that needle. With the old needle poke. See if that fixes anything. All right, let's get that over here. Ah, uh, that's looking pretty old. Yeah, let me, let me grab this here and give you guys a look, see. Oh, God, I don't know if you guys can see that or not here. We're going to have to. Get you focused real close. That's pretty old. That's looking rough. That's looking rough for sure. There we go. Okay. Oh my, did I just burn? Is that, is that burning my plate? So when I, when I dropped this on the plate, I think it actually did burn the plate. Luckily I have a silicone mat over here and I should probably have used that in the beginning. But anyways, we're going to put this on. Um, I guess we're gonna have to just use our fingers at first, but we gotta be careful because it's probably gonna heat up pretty fast. There we go. Kind of grip this and hold it. I definitely should have gotten a better tool, but this is what came with the uh, with the Ender S one, so that's what I'm using. I need to, I'm definitely going to buy a better tool for the next service. I'm only going to service this one for now. I'm going to wait to service the other one because the other one is newer. And I want to see, you know, how this works, how this does. So in the video, I saw the guy give it a pretty good, a pretty good tug. And I think that felt about right. Now, we're also going to grab this little needle here that they provide you, us with. And I'm going to stick that in there and just kind of see what comes out. And that's just gonna, yeah, it went in pretty good. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now we gotta get this thing, oh, we gotta get this back on. Oh, wait, how does it go again? Yeah, this is the way. It's always fun to stick on a hot thing. There we go. I don't really know what this is for. I'm guessing it shields the heat. Is that supposed to be some sort of screw or something? Huh. Weird. All right. But that's it. I mean, that's that, that was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Watch your fingies. Get it back in there. All right. Man, this thing is just... I I just... I don't know. I'm, I'm, I want to make some claims, and I feel like you guys are going to think I'm being really biased here. But just the feeling of quality from this thing, it just feels so good. 
like the way the screws go on and everything like it's just really nice let me move you up here it's just so good like how these screws set in just feels such a premium design like just a really good design so I, you know we'll see one day i want to build a voron i definitely want to build a voron one of these days and if this thing keeps making me money i think i'm gonna because uh i'm starting to get more print uh more orders than i can print without making customers wait so that it's about time soon to get another printer uh, voron just might be the thing all right let's get some pla i have some very crappy pla right up here we're just gonna strap it down in Apparently, the gears inside my direct drive box, um, the gears uh, are, need to be replaced as well. But I'll save that for another day. I think we're good enough now just to see how this nozzle exchange does. Here we go. Let's go get a nice extrude. Looking pretty consistent. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Let me get you down in here. See if I can maybe focus a little bit better on that for you right there. Let's hit another extrude. Yeah, it's definitely wet filament, so I'm hearing some bubbles popping. It's been sitting out, and, and uh, the humidity here is unbelievable. I'm going to get on a tiny little tangent here, because if you could tell, some of the things that I'm saying might be directly contradicting what I was saying in my last video about the Avada, how DIY is the only way to go, and don't give everything to companies, otherwise yada, yada, yada. And I still think that what I'm saying now is in line with that because Creality clearly is a company that's going to give you a fantastic product for a really good price. Maybe not as good as DIY, but I mean, nothing is ever going to be as good as DIY as far as price. You have to waste your time, but it, you know, you're going to be saving a lot of money and maybe even getting a better quality product. But I think that like companies like Creality, especially by the way, from their, their PLA, which is the only PLA I use now. It just shows that they're a company who truly loves 3D printing and they're making products for people like me who don't have the time to learn how to DIY build their 3D printer. And if DJI was like that also, then I would be giving DJI a pat on the back. Unfortunately, I feel like the two companies couldn't be more different in their marketing practices. And it mostly comes down to how they deal with reviewers. Right. And I've seen Creality send things to reviewers who said bad things about their product before and said, hey, maybe our ender this or that wasn't so good. Uh, but check this out now. Right. Check this out. This one's pretty good. You'll like this one because they're smart and they're in it for the long haul. They're here to benefit the community and they know all they have to do is make their product better. Give it to the reviewers who were shitting on them before. And then now they could be like, oh, yeah, now you're saying good things. And then everyone's like, wow, seems like Creality's done a pretty good job this time. Because that guy who was shitting on Creality before now is saying really good things about the Ender S1 Pro. And so then they go out and buy it, which is, by the way, literally what happened with me. This is, I'm telling a story that's exactly the story of what happened with me. It's why I bought the Ender S1 Pro. I saw some videos from a guy who was being pretty negative about Creality builds, and yet he was saying, the, the Ender S1 Pro is it's like, wow, it's really good, you know? And you just know at that point in time, and it was sent to him, by the way, you know at that point in time that Creality is a company who takes itself seriously. If they're willing to send their awesome product to a reviewer who gave them the business, that means that they're not just trying to cheat and steal and lie people's money. They actually believe in their product and they believe in it enough to give it into the hands of a person who even said bad things before. But we all know that DJI will blacklist people if they don't toe the line and say the exact right thing and follow the embargo and all these rules and regulations that are just designed to manipulate the buyer. And I can't get behind that. So a lot of people say I was gatekeeping for FPV because I only want people to do DIY builds. Uh, that might've been my fault and not being really clear with you. I'm sorry, I, that's definitely not what I meant. It's strictly about the practices of how to benefit for yourself, but also benefit the community that you're supporting. I don't want to get on a rant too much, guys. I just think it's really important that we as a community, both in the 3D printing world and in the FPV world, hold these companies accountable for their actions and for the way that they treat us so that we can steer them in the right way and they'll be happier because they have a longer lifespan as a company in this fantastic community. And we'll be happy because we're not being taken advantage of all the time. But if you don't want to be taken advantage of when you're buying a 3D printer, I couldn't think of a better one than the Ender S1 Pro. Anyways, guys, I'm going to get this thing back on the bench and back to 3D printing. I'll catch you next time. This is Dr. Quads signing out.